You're welcome once again to the YM webinar series. As always, a platform provided by the YM as a way of giving back to the community where we share knowledge, transfer knowledge, learn about new things and skill sets for the um, sustenance of the industry. Today, I'm privileged to have Dr. Tony Robin, who is currently the founder and president of the African Institute of Extractive Industries. Tony comes with a background from the Chamber of Mines and Minerals Commission, where he was the CEO. He was also the board chair of Rockshaw International at some stage. And earlier on, he was the, the head of corporate affairs and sustainability for Goldfields. It didn't end there. He also had um, a quick move as a director of corporate affairs for Talo Oil. He has the data, he is well versed on this subject. In fact, he's seen a lot of the happenings in the mineral industry. And I think he's also survived a couple of such um, pandemics. I mean, we all remember the, the last one was which, or the most recent was the Ebola. He's not going to talk about what is happening in the industry because we all know for about a year and a half now, industries have to struggle a bit in making sure social distancing and productivity and production goes hand in hand. He's going to look at it from the other perspective. Is this different from other pandemics? What's the effect that COVID has had both globally and then in the West African South region? And has the industry, as well as the mining industry, built a lot of resilience to face such um, future pandemics? Like I said, I mean, we've wasted your time a bit. I'll go straight to Tony. Um, Doc, if you are um, ready now, you can take on from here. Thank you very much, uh, Lawrence and uh, your team. Thank you and good afternoon to uh, members who are on this uh, webinar. It's a pleasure. I apologize for the delay. And of course, these days you can always blame COVID for any delay that comes. Any inability, you can blame it on COVID. So can we blame the delay <laughs> for a change on COVID? All right. So um, what we're going to do this afternoon, and again, it's an opportunity to share our uh, little knowledge and, and also learn from others, um, is to try and look at uh, COVID as one of the disruptors, one of the major you know, uh, disruptions in, 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 in the world. And uh, we're going to do so first, first on the world and then narrowing down to West Africa. We will begin with an introduction and justifications. And then of course, look at the COVID uh, induced disruptions, whether they are different from previous global disruptions. I think Lawrence have done the introduction and, and the content. So I just skip that. And then uh, we, we go to um, the, the key disruptions in the world. In fact, it is quite clear that disruptions are a key feature of the global dynamics. And many disruptions with varying impact have occurred at various epochs you know, over the last uh, thousand years or so. In fact, if um, McKinsey and company uh, say that there have been about six major disruptions over the last 40 years for which the mining sector has had to experience uh, significant shocks. Um, I, I, they, they describe the last six disruptions as occurring in 19, between 1981 and 87, where we had a second oil shock. And then uh, the, when the Soviet Union collapsed between 1991 in 1994, it was a shock, it was a, a disruption. And then uh, when we had a short crisis, the Asian crisis also created a shock. The dot, the dot com bubble also created a shock. And more, most recently, the uh, financial crisis uh, in 2008, 2009 created a serious shock, as we all know. Uh, and then perhaps the most recent one is the commodity. Uh, price crisis uh, between 2015 and 2016. So these things have been occurring. The recent, the most recent one is uh, what we are going to talk about. And we believe that uh, 
the disruption occasioned by the recent corona pandemic has been the most shocking in the last century. In fact, as of today, hardly any country remained unaffected by COVID. Again, let me say that the ongoing impact on the mining sector remains uncertain. The jury is, is still out there. So whatever has been said or is going to be said would be more or less uh, tentative because we are still experiencing the COVID and uh, we do not know exactly what the full impact uh, are. But uh, looking at it from other crises, um, analysts have seen such crises as uh, from the effect on demand for the commodity, the supply of the commodity, the operating models, community and employees. These are the, 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 the focal point for which uh, some analysts look at effect of um, disruptions or crises. So um, from the global point, um, people think that there is a basic pattern that flows from every uh, disruption that occurs. In fact, the pattern is just based on the commodity price, supply and demand dynamics. And each event can be separated. Some look at it from four distinct phases. Uh, the first phase will be the, uh, you know, the price shock. You have a price shock, which will be followed by demand shock, and then supply and demand equilibrium. And then you come back to a recovery stage. So in every disruption, you go through uh, an initial price shock that the price will go down uh, effectively. And then you see demand also going down and then supply and demand will be struggling to equilibrate. And from there, you see a uh, uh, gradual recovery uh, uh, coming up into normal time. So in the global dynamics, let us quickly look at um, how it has played out in terms of uh, demand for that, for, for that commodity. Now we are looking at minerals generally, and I selected only four of them because um, these are four key minerals that are uh, mined or that are mined commercially in West Africa. In fact, there are a few that I also left out. I looked at uh, steel, copper, zinc, and gold. And uh, for you to look, understand the demand, you, you have to understand the end uses. For steel, it is used largely by uh, the construction industry and largely you see about 51% of steel production going to construction. You see about 17 going into industry generally, about 15% uh, also going into transport and, and so on and so forth. If you go to copper, copper, you see uh, the, the construction, transport, electrical industries being the major consumers. For zinc, largely it, uh, it, it's more an industry user and then uh, used by the industry and then jewelry. But for gold, gold is quite distinct because as we all know, gold is consumed largely by jewelry, jewelers. So you have almost half of the global production of gold going into jewelry. So the jewelry industry is extremely important to uh, the gold business. And of course, um, uh, you know, central banks, some central banks also keep gold as, 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 as a buffer and then other industries. So these are the drivers of, of the demand for the commodities. In fact, during the pandemic, analysts have indicated that supply of uh, commodities have gone down. Um, if you look at uh, some mineral like uranium, nickel, zinc, they've all gone down. Even gold, which is the subject of, which will be the subject of uh, uh, our discussions also went down globally by roughly 10%. So um, you, you, you can see it from, from that point that during the, during the uh, pandemic, during this uh, period, short period, we have had gold production go down by about uh, 10%. Interestingly, all the, in fact, most of the major uh, minerals also saw major price shocks. In fact, uh, coal, 
zinc, aluminum, nickel, steel, they all suffered some pressure. There were four other minerals that really maintained a strong uh, posture uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the midst of the pandemic. Copper saw about 5% rise. Iron also had a, a, a rise in price, especially between January and July. And our own gold also went up for about 19% between January and July uh, 2020. So, so you could see that uh, there, there were some gainers during the pandemic. It wasn't all bad. We, we all saw gold price going up. And as, I don't know if you're seeing the stream, um, you can see the, the gold price that uh, with all its shocks. But, but if you're looking at the screen, you can see that in the middle of 2020, you, uh, the gold industry experienced one of the, the, the peak of, of, of its price uh, dynamics. So uh, it wasn't all that bad for the gold industry in terms of price. However, in terms of production, there was a, a, a reduction by roughly 10%. But McKenzie tries to predict revenue loss for the, for, for the mining industry in general. And there's a prediction of between 90 billion and 200 billion uh, loss due dollars. I mean, 200 billion dollars loss due to COVID. So the, the estimation is that um, the COVID would have led to a loss of about of between 90 and 200 billion uh, uh, you know, of, 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 of mineral revenues. Now, let me come back home and narrow ourselves down to West Africa. And the question would be, why are we interested in West Africa? Why wouldn't we look at elsewhere? Then, I mean, answers would be very natural. I, I am a West African and why am I West Africa? I believe where one day is going to be African. Uh, so, so it was good to focus on Africa. But, but most importantly, um, in West Africa, we have about five or six commercially exploited minerals, gold, manganese, iron, or bauxite, um, diamonds, nickel, zinc, copper. They are among the key minerals that uh, are mined uh, at, at commercial level. In fact, gold mining in Africa has seen a significant paradigm shift from South African dominance to the rising importance of the West African region in the last decade. What it means is that, you know, West Africa is becoming very, very important in the story of gold production. It shifted from South Africa, the dominance, to West Africa. Now, Ghana, Burkina Faso, Mali are the top three gold producing countries in West Africa. And together, they produce close to 33% of um, the total gold of uh, gold production in, in Africa. Now, with the exception of, let's say, Gabon, the total gold produced by seven countries in West Africa, if you look at last year, 2019, uh, amounted to about 6.4, I'm sorry, 3.364, sorry, 364 tons. 364 tons. This formed approximately 42% of gold production in Africa last year. That is, sorry, last two years, 2019, before the pandemic. So before the pandemic, we produced this uh, quantity of gold. So gold is extremely important uh, to West Africa. Now, again, and I'm quoting from the CEO of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, who says that West Africa has been the hotspot to many explorers in terms of gold mining in Africa. So it means that a lot of exploration work is going on largely Ivory Coast, uh, um, Mali, Ghana. So these are going on. And so this is a hot a hotbed for, for mineral production, mineral exploration, largely gold. So it's important for us to understand the impact of a crisis in the sub-region. Now, I mean, it need not be said that the West African economy is largely dependent on minerals. Employment are generated by uh, the mines. They also provide economic infrastructure and social amenities. They are a source of revenue to governments, significant source of revenue to, to government. In fact, in Ghana, we're talking about 14% of internally generated revenue uh, uh, coming from the mining industry. And uh, their contribution to merchandise, um, you know, 
resources, American foreign exchange is also uh, well known. In Ghana, we are talking about over 40% of um, foreign exchange being generated by the industry. Of course, their contribution to domestic, gross domestic product is also well recognized. So uh, it's, it's the, 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 the sub region is very, very important. In fact, it is estimated that we are sitting on about um, uh, 300 million ounces of, of gold. The sub region is sitting on that about 50% uh, of which is already being produced as a production going on, and the rest at various stages of, uh, of, of exploration and production. So, uh, you know, this underscores the importance of, uh, the rich, of, of minerals to, to the region. Now, having said this, you realize that COVID came and attacked everything. Um, in fact, if you look at the Center for Disease Control, they say that uh, the COVID-19 actually recorded about 181,000 uh, uh, infections, uh, and then 2,662 deaths, and uh, 163 uh, excess of 163 recoveries, uh, you know, by as of October. So it's had a very devastating impact on West Africa, even though it cannot be compared with uh, what happened in uh, South Africa. Now, the impact of COVID would be seen largely through its related lockdown across the region. At one point uh, in, in, in the sub region, over one quarter of the region's gold mines were on hold due to the lockdown. So one quarter of the gold mines were asked to, to stop production completely. And you, you, you know what it means when production uh, stops completely. It's a lot of costs. Uh, it's got a lot of cost implications. Uh, but, but compared to what happened in South Africa, I think uh, it was like a, 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 a drop in the ocean. South Africa had a, a, a much bigger requirement to stop production in its uh, gold and other mineral areas. Now, if you look at uh, the growth, I mean, I'm trying to talk about the impact in terms of the growth. The region is supposed to have uh, lost about 5% of its uh, production of gold in particular, um, compared to production in 2019. So it means that we lost grounds uh, after a very impressive showing uh, in, in 2019. And this, this was largely due to, um, you know, temporary suspension of mines. In Burkina Faso, for instance, uh, the Hawande mine was suspended, and then the Fecula, mine in Mali were also, was also suspended. In fact, the collective output of leading countries of gold in West Africa, Ghana, Mali, Burkina Faso, fell by 4.7 in 2020, with the greatest declines in Ghana and Mali, which fell by 7.5 and 5.6 respectively. So the, 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 the impact in terms of the quantum that we produced uh, was quite significant. I must quickly say that in Ghana, uh, we experienced a minimal impact on, you know, on gold mining activities because it, it was among the few countries that resumed a few uh, activities that resumed operations after 21 days mandatory lockdown across major metropolitan and, uh, cities uh, in March 2020. Uh, sorry, I have a, a little bit of a technical challenge here, but uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll be fine. Uh -huh. Okay. So production in Mali also fell by about 5.6% around the same time, and largely it came from the closure of the Morilla and Sadiola mines. Um, you know, the government of Mali imposed a lockdown for about 10 days due to um, new... COVID cases 
um, you know, due to new COVID cases. They, they were initially defiant, but uh, they had to sort of lock down because of the increased COVID cases. But fortunately, contrary wise, you see production in Burkina Faso went up by about 2.1%. Uh, um, this was largely due to a high production from Mana Gold, Kama, and Hounde mines, which together grew by about 46%. Of course, the Guangdong Gold and the Sabrado Gold all in Burkina Faso also came on stream. So it actually added on to the production in the area. Uh, so in terms of production, yes, there, 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 there was a reduction generally in West Africa, with the exception of Burkina Faso. And the, the quantum of reduction would be about 4% in total. Now, um, if you look at exploration activities, and exploration is actually the bedrock of mining, because without uh, uh, new grounds, you cannot go on to expand your mineral base. Now, um, in West Africa, we were quite hit by the pandemic because most of the exploration activity uh, expatriates who found themselves in their home countries before, just before the pandemic and the lockdowns were not allowed to come back for, for a while. I mean, um, they were locked down. They will not be allowed to come to Ghana or to any West African country or their own countries will not allow them to travel. So this told some of the exploration activities in the country, uh, uh, I mean, as the conditions were deemed unsafe. In fact, as a consequence, in Ghana, for example, some unwork exploration concessions saw some illegal miners making a field day because they, 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 nobody was working there. And uh, you, you know, the daring uh, miners also uh, took advantage of that. Those who tried to safeguard that had to incur some cost to do that. So not only was there the stopping of exploration for a while, there was also the cost of maintaining the, the grounds that, that were being invaded by uh, uh, illegal miners. Now, again, the closure of the borders of, um, of, of some LBMA certified refineries, you know, some of the refineries where most of our companies uh, refine their gold were also closed. And therefore, that had issues in terms of uh, the producers keeping their gold right in the country or, or keeping them in their vault and the security ch challenges that came with it. Um, some technical expatriates were unable to fly in and fly out of the country due to local and international travel restrictions. And I, I mean, this, these have been quite documented by the Ghana Chamber of Mines. Uh, who, who, whose CEO did a presentation recently. But in the Ghana Chamber of Mines, they secured a dispensation for their member companies to bring their expertise um, through chartered flight. So there, there were side arrangements by some companies and some organizations, associations, to bring in uh, expatriates or their experts um, through chartered flights, special arrangement and all that. As you all know, some employees, even at the local level, were retained on the mines not to travel. In fact, there was a lockdown in most mine sites, as you would agree with me. And, and, and some of them had to work longer hours. And uh, I met one guy who said, well, they, they, they are working longer hours, but they're making a bit more money than uh, they would have done if they were working shorter hours. So uh, this would have meant a little bit of a cost to, um, to the organization, to the companies. So that, that, that was an issue that came up as a result of the COVID. Now, for the reasons of not being able to fly in and fly out, the items that money to be brought in had to be done so at a higher cost. So if you did uh, uh, you know, money to have a chartered flight to bring your, your inventory, you're going to have to pay higher costs for that. And, and of course, the, uh, invest, the, the, the flight cost increased uh, as would be expected. And uh, as I indicated, 
because some of the LBMA, and the LBMA, I assume that all of us understand it, the London Billion Market Association uh, refineries, those certified refineries where most West African major companies refine their gold, they, because they were closed, some associations made alternative arrangements for their members to uh, refine their gold. And I think that was kudos to those uh, in-country associations that worked with, with the LBMA uh, um, certified refineries to allow for alternative uh, refining. And uh, I will also praise the Chamber of Mines of Ghana for, for leading that charge. In fact, you would also agree with me that manufacturing of most inputs are done offshore. And so when you, are, you really don't have the chance of, of uh, transporting them, it becomes another major issue because the sea and the air cargo uh, were all closed. Now, we also note that China being the major producer of most of these, uh, or major manufacturer, most of these uh, uh, inputs also became the epicenter, as someone has described it, of the uh, coronavirus disease. So obviously, it created problems for, uh, for companies to access inventory to, to do their businesses. Now, the other issue that I'd like to look at is uh, how the industry responded to the pandemic. I mean, uh, we've seen how the pandemic has affected the industry. We have seen the reduction in production. We have seen how at the micro level, uh, the, the pandemic affected the operations, uh, the, the, the inventory challenges, the personnel challenges, the challenges of flying people in and flying people out, and, and, and the, the challenges of keeping staff locked down and a few staff working all the time. So, so the, the, this were the, the, the way the, the, the COVID impacted on us. But how did we uh, address them? You know, the responses I would say were varied from country to country. In fact, as I've indicated earlier, most industry associations and regulators work together to issue guidelines to their member companies just to accord with what the WHO and government protocols require. So that was the first major actions taken in most countries, in, in most West African countries. And I'm, I'm aware of the Ghanaian case. Uh, I'm intimately aware of the Ghanaian case. Uh, some of them, the industry made major financial and material contribution to um, the, the, the challenge, to, to fighting the challenge. For instance, in Ghana, about the, the, the gold industry, the mining industry contributed about $3 million uh, to government efforts. Some of them did in-kind support to their communities. They uh, provided food and all that. So that's another way they tried to combat the, um, the pandemic. And then and, uh, the most interesting thing is that most West African government took a strategic view that the mining industry is an essential business. And I'm sure all of us understand why. I, I was envisaging a situation where the mining industry would be closed down for, let's say, a month. And there would be a disaster in the coffers of governments. So governments were very smart in declaring the mining industry, particularly the gold industry, as essential business. You question yourself how essential is mining business, apart from the revenue that they will generate and the, the support of uh, employment that they, they maintain. Uh, it doesn't give food, it doesn't give uh, any uh, other thing that without which you, you will die. But if the industry had been stopped from, or have been locked down in a way that countries were generally locked down, uh, we would have been uh, in a, a serious uh, shock. So I think, West African government did do well by declaring the, the, the industry as essential. So uh, activities continued while other people were locked down. In fact, in some countries, they secured a dispensation for members to transport 
They are taking care of the as I indicated. While the whole country was locked down, while the, the airport, the seaport, and the land port had been closed, um, the, the government allowed the industry some leeway for them to, to manipulate. So I, I think that, that, was, that was good, and that was one of the ways the industry responded to the COVID challenge. Now, uh, if you look at, as I've indicated, the, 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 the Chamber of Mines in Ghana and elsewhere, I mean, the, the industrial association elsewhere also, also work with government to uh, arrange alternative refineries for their members, which I think was uh, a, a, good, a good move for uh, the industry. Now, um, if you look at the, 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 the responses to community, and communities are very important in our part of the world when you're dealing with mining. Um, most mining companies have about 70% of their staff coming from the communities. And of course, they are an, an integral part of the business. So you would see how swift, and I had the opportunity to travel to a couple of our mines and uh, it was very impressive how the mining companies supported the communities with all their PPEs and other, and help them to, to, to uh, address the, the COVID protocols that were necessary. In fact, they put their health facilities, some of them at the disposal of their communities. And I thought that was a, a brave move um, by the mining companies. Um, I, I mean, so, so basically what, what I've been trying to say is that uh, this disruption elicited different form of approach, some of which had to be done closely with government, some of which had to be done individually by the mining companies themselves. Others have to be led by the, 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 the mining uh, the association in their respective countries. So the, the next question is, what does the future look like? And, and I mean, what, what, what does it look like having gone through this uh, uh, pandemic? Now, uh, I would say that there is a significant uncertainty around the shape of the recovery graph and the effectiveness of public health responses in controlling the spread and impact of the virus. So at this moment, we don't know very well what the impact of the virus will be, will be uh, whether we have a full handle uh, of, 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 the, of the pandemic. Uh, only this afternoon, I heard that in India, there's been a major outbreak again. And so we still are not in very, very safe territory. However, um, in West Africa, there is a prediction that gold production is likely to go up. In fact, it is expected to increase by 2.7 in 2021. So uh, in spite of the pandemic, some, somebody, some people call it post-pandemic, but we are not in the post-pandemic era. I think we are rather in the post-severe pandemic era. We are not in a very severe uh, era. Now that we, we, we have um, all these vaccines, the pandemic is there, but I think there's a little bit of uh, understanding of it and uh, a lot of uh, some control measures being put in place. However, in terms of gold production, the uh, West African sub-region will be home and dry with 2.7 uh, increase in production, which might be about 8 million ounces. Uh, and it's expected to grow to about uh, 8.4 million ounces uh, by 20. 24. Now, it is, a, it is estimated that the majority of this growth will come from Ghana. And uh, you ask me why Ghana? Um, we, 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 we are aware that Angogo Dashanti's um, Obwase mine, you know, which was at a point in time on care maintenance, they, 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 they are the, 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 the case, the, the, the first phase has already been completed I mean, in terms of their redevelopment. They've completed the first phase of the redevelopment and uh, there's a, a momentum for the second phase 
uh, which was even maintained during the COVID time, there's a projected production of about 200,000 ounces in 2021. That is a kind of information, uh, the data that, that I have. So if that comes on, on, on board, that's going to be a significant addition to, to the, the, the uh, uh, quantum of gold that we're going to produce. Uh, the same goes for Burkina Faso. Gold production in Burkina Faso is expected to grow at about 3.8%, uh, which will mean um, uh, about 460 kilo ounces of new gold that will be coming. So that's, that's, a, that's a significant contribution to the gold port for West Africa. Um, overall, a total of 12 projects are currently under development across Ghana, Burkina Faso, and Mali, and they are all expected to come on stream by about 2024, which actually uh, gives uh, some hope that the gold industry will, will, uh, will, will, will be able to uh, strengthen in spite of the major uh, disruption that we saw. I don't know if uh, the screen is up there. There's a graph that shows um, you know, the trends uh, of gold production up to 2024. And this graph was picked from uh, McKenzie uh, and company. And uh, if you, they, they try to do a comparison between this and, uh, and uh, between our region and South Africa. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, uh, positive in a way. And uh, we, we, we hope to enjoy that as, as, as good producing country. Now, the multi-million dollar question that has to be asked is this. In fact, in, in most West African countries, and, and not only West Africa, but most governments around the globe uh, have had major revenue and uh, uh, you know, major revenue uh, challenge. They have had infrastructure deficits. They have had uh, you know, a lot of shortfalls. Now, the question will be who is likely to pay? Who is likely to pay for this shortfall? And uh, given that the other industries are not doing very well, given that manufacturing is doing, not doing very well, um, the tendency for, and, and of course, we see gold price going higher and gold production likely to go higher. I, I think mining companies must bring themselves for, for uh, a call by government. I just, this is just what I'm seeing. It's not, it's not I don't have any uh, inside, uh, inside that information, but I think that there's a tendency for some subtle taxes or even in some situations it could be overt taxes and then possibly project offsets. It is possible that government will be coming to the industry to say, oh, uh, we have a road to be constructed here. Can you construct that road for us? And then we offset it with your tax or something like that. Um, these are things that we must already, already uh, brace ourselves uh, to. Now, what lessons can we learn and conclude with, with this presentation? I think that the industry has been generally successful in implementing a rapid response and business continuity plans. In fact, for mining industry and in fact the extractive industry generally, with the, the, the major companies, they, uh, they, they, they are credited with uh, being resilient, being able to, to plan ahead and always uh, having rapid responses and business continuity plans. I don't know how quickly they were able to, to, to rule that when the pandemic came, but overall, there is, a, the, there is the uh, perception that uh, the industry responded quite positively to the pandemic in its, the way it came. Uh, we demonstrated a significant level of resilience that like, as you can see in the, in the gold side, in spite of the, um, in spite of the pandemic, and the reduction in production is still where serious revenue ends. Now, we need to be ready. Uh, this is something that I believe it's important to know that disruptions are part of 
a global dynamics. And therefore, rather than wait before you experience disruption, we need to be ready. And I think it doesn't go for only the mining industries. Industries in general, countries uh, in general, must be ready and anticipatory of disruptions and develop the necessary resilience mechanism. And they should be able to, 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 to uh, deploy them immediately they happen. So that's the, I think we need to welcome uh, disruptions and prepare to live with them. And then the other lesson that we can conclude with is uh, we need to, I mean, the, the, the disruptions, the current disruptions improved efficiency uh, and, and help, it helped us use our time, space, and our numbers effectively. I am sure you can align yourself to that. Uh, why is showing exactly why this efficient, efficiency has come up. I mean, we are doing this uh, webinar, a lot of people are on it, um, but we are doing it from our homes or from our offices. Uh, earlier on, we never even uh, anticipated that. Institute we, uh, meetings were the order of the day. We are now using our numbers, we are now using our spaces very effectively. So it's a lesson that we have learned and we need to uh, uh, move with that. Okay, we need also to deepen intra and inter industry collaborations. In situations like this, inter and intra industry collaborations are the way to go. Mining companies in Tapa should have to deepen their collaborations in, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, inventory, excess inventory, and, and, and lower inventory in various mines that can be exchanged. And of course, our partnership with our community need to continue to grow and deepen. And so, so basically, this is uh, where I think we will end for people to ask questions if they do have one. We have come through a situation where uh, uh, disruptions are part of our lives. Um, the COVID was a, one of the most serious disruptions in recent times. It has its impact uh, on production, on human, and uh, on revenue. Uh, in West Africa, we managed to uh, scale through a bit in terms of production because of, of, of the preponderance of goods. And, uh, and of course, even though the production amount went down, uh, there was, it didn't go down significantly as it would be. So um, colleagues, this is where I think we should end and allow for questions to be asked and for discussions to go on. Thank you very much.